In this video, I'm going to share with you how you can use my free downloadable Excel or Google Sheet to help you quickly resolve reconciliation errors in Xero's accounting software. Hi, I'm Tam, an accountant, financial technology consultant, and entrepreneur. Anyone who's ever worked in Xero and reconciled a bank statement knows that when everything runs smoothly, it's a massive relief. But what happens when things just don't go as planned? In those situations, I just try to remain positive and reassure myself that everything's gonna be just fine. But in all seriousness though, the reality is that fixing bank reconciliation errors can be extremely painful, time consuming, and sometimes it makes you wanna do this. Before we dive into the spreadsheet mechanics and how it can help you quickly fix your reconciliation errors, let's cover five of the most common reasons your balances in Xero might be off. This is the first place I'll look. Conversion balance errors most often arise when you swap over from another accounting software to Xero, but it can also happen when you're starting fresh, meaning you've picked a date where you're bringing in transactions to reconcile in Xero without converting any historical data. The error can be as simple as forgetting to enter the beginning balances, or if you're converting from another accounting software, you'll want to make sure that the final balances from your old software, in other words, the trial balance, matches the conversion balances in zero. The reason incorrect balances can throw off reconciliation is because bank fee transactions will build from the beginning balances that you've set here. And if your beginning number is off, then the ending balance will be off. Incorrect conversion dates can also contribute to the issue, so make sure you have selected the correct date. This is the date that you plan to bring transactions for categorization into zero. Most often, it's going to be January 1st, the start of the new year. On occasion, you'll find manual entries added by users in the general ledger. These are entries added outside of the automatic bank fee import. So you want to ver verify the legitimacy of these transactions to ensure they are not duplicate transactions. I've often found that these user-made entries don't belong and will simply void or delete them. In some instances, the bank feed may not be updating in zero as it should, which can result in duplicate or missing transactions. You want to refresh the bank feed and compare the imported transactions in zero to the bank statement to identify those missing or duplicate transactions and remove or add them as needed. Issues with zero reconciliation can also stem from incorrect transaction matches. And this is where transactions in the bank feed have been matched to an invoice or bill in zero that it shouldn't have. You can clean this up by unmatching the invoice or bill, which will then allow you to rematch a transaction to the correct one. Lastly, another cause of error could be due to incorrectly transferring balances from one account to another. I've had to learn this one the hard way, but you'll want to make sure that both transactions from the accounts that you're transferring to and from are available in Xero before you click the transfer button. For example, if you're paying down a credit card from a checking account, make sure that you see the spend money in the checking account and the corresponding receive money in the credit card account before clicking transfer. This will match the transfer properly without creating duplicate transactions in your general ledger. Okay, now that we know the most common reasons your zero bank balance might be off in the first place, let's go ahead and dive into the reconciliation spreadsheet to learn how we can find some of these errors more quickly. So first things first, if you don't already have access to the template, go ahead and download it using the link below. I'll go ahead and throw it into the description. Then you can get started and follow along. Okay, so the first thing we'll want to do is just head into Xero and navigate to the bank account where your bank reconciliation is off. So here I am in the checking account. Um, on the top right hand corner, you'll see this tiny little link here for reconciliation report. We're going to head into the report there. Okay, great. And at this point, we want to run this for the financial period that you're creating the bank reconciliation for. Uh, in my demo company, I'm going to select this month and update. And at this point, you can also enter in the bank statement ending balance. So let's say, for example, the ending balance for this account is going to be $2,000. I'll go ahead and update that. That's the number that I pulled from my bank statement. So 
So definitely want to have your bank statement handy uh, for the rest of this process. And then scrolling down below, you'll see at the very bottom of this where there are the statement balances. You have the calculated statement balance from zero, meaning they're taking basically your conversion balances, uh, adding all of these transactions and pending items on top of those balances, and they're calculating what your statement balance should be. You also have the bank statement ending balance, so $2,000. That's the number that we just entered above. That's the number that we pulled from the bank statement. And then the calculated balance out by is just the difference between those two numbers. So ideally this number should be zero, but because we're off here, we want to do some investigating. So coming back up to the top, just wanted to quickly run through the other two pages in this report. So we are viewing the bank reconciliation summary. The second report within this bank reconciliation report is the bank statement, which contains all of the transactions for that given financial period, whether they are expenses or deposits. And then lastly, you have the statement exceptions report. This report can be helpful. Sometimes it'll outline whether you might have a duplicate transaction or a user generated transaction. So we talked about that. This was a transaction that was created outside of the bank feed import. And so might be something that you want to take a look at. But in our use case, we're going to go ahead and export this report to a spreadsheet. And in my case, I'll do it to Google Sheets. Okay, and from here, what I'm going to do is just simply grab the data from the bank statement tab. So again, these are all the transactions for that given financial period. So columns A through H, I'm going to grab all this information. I'm going to control C or copy that data. And then I'm going to head over to the template, the downloadable template. There's a few different tabs on here. You're still mindful of there's a readme tab, which will contain a link to this YouTube video in case you need to go back and reference it. There's also a sample tab. So if you wanted to play around with some sample data here, mark some transactions, um, see what gets highlighted, enter in some of the bank balances. We'll talk about that in a second. This is for simply for you to play around with. And then what we want to navigate to is the bank reconciliation or the use me tab. You're going to have a blank slate here to start. And what we want to do is just paste that data that we had copied from the zero export. So I go, I'm going to select column A, or you can select the first cell and just paste that data. So the goal here on this tab, it's designed to basically help you narrow down where your problem should be. The highlighted cells indicate unreconciled transactions and also user generated entries. On the right hand side, the gray cells are the ones that you'll want to manually update. The other cells are formulas that I've already inputted into the spreadsheet. So you don't want to touch those. Um, here, under the enter missing transactions, if you find that there are transactions for the bank statement that you are missing, that's where you want to enter them. Because anything that you enter here will actually be transferred over to the zero import tab, which has already been configured for import into zero. So you don't have to do any additional uh, manipulation with the data. So again, make sure that you have the bank statement ready for this piece. Um, here, we're gonna wanna enter in the total amount for the withdrawals or expenses. So for the sake of this demonstration, we'll go ahead and just make this the exact same number as the number above. What this is doing is just totaling the transactions that we have inputted here into the spreadsheet and summing up everything that's an expense and everything that is a deposit. So when we go ahead and enter in that number from the bank statement, the spreadsheet is going to calculate the difference. And because this number is the same as the one from zero, that bank balance difference is gonna be zero. Now let's say that the deposit total is $15,000. So what that tells us now is that we're actually missing $3,527.50 worth of deposits. So it's, it's helpful to see whether the withdrawals or the deposits are impacted. So we can further narrow down our search this way. Now, at this point, you may know exactly what the difference is. If you have a few transactions that you have identified, uh, you can stop here, go into zero, enter in those transactions and be done with it. However, if you're still having difficulties figuring out where the issues are coming from, 
this is where this uh, next piece might help. So this is going to resemble um, maybe the bank reconciliation models that you're familiar with in other systems, but essentially you're doing a manual cross-referencing against your bank statement. Mm -hmm. So have your bank statement ready. And then here, what you'll do is you'll just mark these transactions as you run across them on bank statement. So we have a transaction here for city limousines for hundred dollars. I verify that this is on my bank statement. So I'm just going to mark X. So as you notice, as I mark these transactions with an X on the right hand side, it's totaling up here under manual reconciliation. It's going to start adding your deposits together. It's going to start adding your expenses and then the bank difference will start decreasing. So you know what your remaining difference is. What'll make this easier because we know our expenses aren't off. We know that they're already in balance. We can actually sort, right? We can sort from A to Z. And so everything here is going to be sorted by or grouped by expenses and deposits. So a quick way just to go through for the sake of this is to copy and paste those X's all the way down those expenses, because we know that's not the problem. And you can see here bank difference is zero. And then for the deposits, let's go ahead and check all these transactions because we know that they're legitimate. We know that they're on the bank statement and okay. Everything's been marked off. Well, we still have a difference of $3,527 and 50 cents. In some cases you might have duplicate entries in here. Maybe you didn't check that off. So that's something that you would go into zero and void or delete. In this case, everything here is legitimate, but we're still missing this. And for simplicity's sake, maybe that's just one transaction. So what we'll do here in the missing transactions below is just enter in that missing transaction. So let's say that we missed it, a transaction on the first of the month for exactly $3,527.50. Payee is Acme Corporation. And then if you have any descriptions, reference numbers, check numbers, please enter that here as well. Now, what the great thing here is if you have multiple transactions you're entering here, again, that's going to update and reflect within these numbers here. So now that we have this transaction entered, the deposits match the bank balance. You have a zero bank difference. That's exactly what we want. So from here, how do we get this transaction or transactions into zero? Well, the great part is this information here is going to transfer to the zero import tab, which has already been configured for you to just save as a CSV file and then upload into zero. So I wouldn't worry about these, all these different um, rows that you have in here with zero values. When you go to import this within zero, it's not going to recognize these empty columns. It's only going to recognize this first row. So what do we do here? Let's go ahead and save this file as a CSV file. So I'm in Google sheets. I'm going to download this as a, a CSV. And here we go. I've got zero reconciliation in the spreadsheet. This is the third time that I'm doing this, but let's hop over to zero. And I just want to confirm that I am sitting in the correct account where I do want to import this missing transaction. And that is the checking account. So under manage account, I will import a statement. And if you do make mistakes here, you can always delete the entire statement import. I've definitely, um, uploaded transactions with the wrong sign. So in zero, when you're uploading transactions, one amount column. So you have to have the right negatives and positives in there. But what's great is you do get to see a preview of the transactions. So what do I mean by that? Let's go ahead and select that file. Here's that third version of this zero reconciliation spreadsheet that I downloaded directly from the Google sheet. I'll click next. And this is where you map those columns from that file. So zero is going to attempt to assign fields from zero and map them to the column headings in the CSV file. So here is the column heading. I've got dates, I've got amount, payee, description. So these are all the columns that I had in the Google sheet. Here are some example data. So this is the very first row. We have the transaction from February 1st, the amount $3,527.50 and then Acme Corporation. And you wanna make sure that those are mapped correctly over here. Oftentimes the mapping is pretty good. Um, zero, we don't have anything for the description. It's mapped to description field. So I'm just gonna put no field here. I'm not gonna import the first line because they are column headings. 
And then I highly recommend that you take a look at the transaction previews before you go ahead and import anything into zero, just to save you a step if you were to mess up, right? So in this case, because we only have that one transaction, this looks okay, February 1st, 2024, we've got Acme Corporation, the amount received, so it's in the correct column. It's not a spend money, it's a receive money, We're receiving a sales deposit. Um, if you had other transactions you needed to verify, just to make sure that the signs were correct, you could go ahead and click next and preview some of those transactions. Now you can see here that we're pre previewing transactions one out of 91. And don't worry about that right now. What that's doing is it's actually pulling in um, some of those other rows that we had in our CSV file. But if I click next, so you'll see some of those other rows, right? We had zero for the payees, zero for the transaction amount. Zero is identifying those transactions as being errors. So we have one transaction that's ready to import. We have 90 that have errors and cannot be imported. So that's why I mentioned before, you don't have to worry about those rows that are coming through to zero. The only one that's gonna come through is the one for Acme Corporation. Okay. So let's complete that import. And then at this point, you see that we still have 30 transactions to reconcile for the given month. You definitely want to go through and match these transactions against the appropriate invoices or bills. Um, you also have cash coding so that you can bulk reconcile those transactions as well. You can get those these done much, much faster. But just for um, our sake and for a sanity check, we want to make sure that the bank rec is now going to tie. So let's go ahead and rerun that reconciliation report for the end of February to confirm that we now have a zero balance or zero difference, I should say. So again, run it for this month. I'll go ahead and enter in the ending bank statement balance of $2,000, which we entered before. Update this report. And now when we scroll down to the bottom to check our ending balances again, we should have a zero difference. Now, if you were paying attention at the very beginning of this video when I did this reconciliation, we were actually out by $891.23. And so the entry that we should have imported into the system should have been for $891.23. However, we did it for 3,000 some odd dollars. And so that actually threw off my balance even more. Um, I did have to adjust conversion balances to make this tie to zero, but hope you get the idea. I, I hope this is helpful. The last step that you want to take once you have achieved this zero balance and after you have reconciled your transactions, reviewed your financial reports, just to make sure that nothing looks fishy, is to publish this bank reconciliation. Just so that you have a memorialized picture of your bank rec in case anything were to change. So here, what we want to do is just save this as a published report and you have the freedom to update the title for this bank reconciliation. Um, I just tend to leave this as is. You can decide to include a cover page or include a contents page. But once you've configured this report, you can just go ahead and click save. Where this report will live is in your published tab under your reports. So under accounting, reports, published, so if someone were to come in here, make any changes to zero within the month of February, and that throws up your bank rack again, you can always refer back to this published report. And then this is an optional step, but you can also go ahead and lock the balances by going into advanced financial settings, and then just locking the period so that no one can make any additional changes that you don't want them to. Um, I won't go into the details of lock dates in this video, but just know that this is an option for you to prevent those mistakes. And you can always come back and update this in case you do need to make any journal entries or any edits uh, within that financial period. So that's it. I hope that you found this guide helpful. Um, again, if you haven't already downloaded this template, you can do so in the link in the description below. And also, if you liked this video, please go ahead and actually hit the like button as well. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.